so hi everyone so today we would be looking at one of the application of lora i have used the low rank adoption on llms till now but in today we will be looking at the adoption of a already built model of like you must have heard of blip if you guys don't have heard of it don't worry we will talk about it in detail in this video so coming to the part why we will be using lora today so in the previous video we looked at pef and all the applications of lora like why lora is useful and how you can do it so today we will be fine tuning an image to text conversion algorithm using lora so researchers have long grappled with the challenge of you know fine tuning in the realm of large language models so microsoft's innovation that is the uh, that, that is the lora model uh, is used as a technique for that so it pioneering method addresses this by keeping the weights of the pre trained model static as we talked in the previous video and integrating the trainable layers you know termed rank decomposition matrix so in the previous video i told you a lot of terms when it comes to lora configuration function so we will be looking at each of them in detail in today's video so we will be using these uh, these like uh, modules and libraries for our notebook so if you are using this in your uh, system which doesn't has cpu i have uh, like gpu i would highly recommend you to upload this notebook to google colab and then go on with it so we are using pytorch for the tensor operations you guys can even use tensorflow the reason i knew from the previous 6 to 7 videos i'm using torch is because the code and part which comes to pef and hugging face becomes really simple when it comes to torch rather or not i can give the give you the link to the same notebook with same content using tensorflow in the description section and you guys who are not at all familiar with torch functions can go and learn from it but i would recommend you to go with this notebook only because there are not a lot of different things yeah a bit so we are using the pytorch we are using pil for image processing now we are from transformer we are importing the blip processor and blip for conditional generation so like for the importation you just don't even need to copy things simply go here and just see how you can do this you can see here from pre trained from trained and if you want to deploy this you have all the things for training so all the things are already available here you don't need to worry about any code function part so we are using the blip processor blip for condition generation and then we have data set and we are using lora configure and get pef model okay so we are using cuda because in torch we are already have available, available gpu here so this line is basically checking if the gpu is available for computation so if not default we will be using cpu but as i told you in the beginning it is highly recommended that you use gpu so we will be using this salesforce blip image captioning and now let's talk about it so it stands for bootstrapping language image pre trained for unified vision language understanding and generation i know it's a very big name so this is uh, uh, like the model card every model has a card specifically when it comes to uh, the big models image to text and all the models that are present on uh, hugging face so for image captioning pre trained on the coco dataset so i guess you guys already know about the coco dataset uh, we have talked about that in the previous video here you go so this is the coco, coco dataset it is one of the best dataset when it comes to for image so uh, we have here you can see it is large scale object detection segmentation and captioning dataset so coco has several advantages object segmentation recognition in context super pixel stuff segmentation 33 30k images 1.5 million parameters like a lot of things uh so these are the sponsors of it and you if you guys want to read the research paper you can go here you can see the data set examples so this whole uh, like model is trained on the blip the blip image captioning is trained on this coco data set okay so the base architecture here it is it has vit based backbone so if you guys don't know about vid i will give you the link to this in the description section you guys can go and read about it in detail because it's always good to know about how things are working in the back end so in, it is using that simple like when we, when we talk about llms or like an, any transformer we know that the architecture at the back end must be using self retention and retention and then you have multi feed forward networks attached to each other so we even even have the research paper here in the in the so here are the citations if you want to see how it works on gpu you have all the things here but don't worry we won't be needing that much thing if you want to read the paper you can definitely go here so what is uh, basically this blip image captioning you must have got a like overview so it helps in you know 
classifying the, like the if you give it an image it is it will be able to tell you that exactly what is happening in the image and it is obviously built by salesforce so yeah it's good uh, if you want to like see the models which are available for this intensive flow here you go and if this is the large one i think yeah the blip image captioning large it was the base one i uh, will just take you here it is the base one and what this is exactly telling is that it is an image to text transformer is definitely use a pytorch intensive flow i used it, capable auto training compactable image captioning and these are the all the functionalities of it this is the large one now let's see how many parameters it have when when it comes to the differences you go here you can see actually what's exactly the difference and the paper would obviously won't be different so let's look at so we have used the processor for it and the model and now we have made model to device so just to make sure that things are easy for us because in the device we are using gpu that's the reason now let's print the number of parameters this is the obviously function that i all every time use in my peft videos or uh, models video so when we print the trainable parameters we see these are the number of parameter it has so a lot of parameters are here, present here you can see here and all the parameters are trainable that is 100% so when you have so many parameters like say 1 10 100 1000 to 1 lakh then like 24 crores of parameters when it, i think 2.4 billion parameters are there right so 2.4 billion parameters are there so so many par parameters if you want to fine tune it suppose you are fine tuning your model for something let's say any example you won't obviously want so uh, you won't even have that much of computation power suppose let's take an example i am taking this football data set that is present on hanging face it has six images just six images and i just want to fine tune my model on this football data set do i actually actually need to fine tune on every aspect of the whole model no i don't so actually i can use lora for actually scaling down the model and then fine tuning on that because you know just imagine training it on 2.4 billion parameters like just imagine it would take so much computation power and do we actually need that much no we don't and do we actually have no we don't so why to go with that so we will be loading that data set and we will just print the data set it has six images and we just see the first image and you have uh, the text also for these images the benzema Mardino after winning 1986 fifa world cup so all the football uh, fans would actually know what's happening there i'm not a sports guy so Mm, not that much sure of what is happening exactly in the images and who are these guys so so now let's adapt the data set so the implementation of the lora relies on the pef library you guys already know that so however when it comes to image to text problems pef is not ideally suited for this the, for this specific task it is actually made for llms but consequently a series of adjustment can be actually made to make sure we can we ensure that seamless compatibility is here so these modifications are necessary to enhance the framework's effectiveness in handling the unique challenges. So we are just these are just you know simple functions, and in this we are actually just mapping things. You know get item we are just self processing it and returning type is equals to tensor, and we will remove the batch dimension. Okay, so this will make sure that things work according to how we want them. Now adapting the model. So subsequent model as I told you, the step in a process involves adapting a model for Lora fine tuning. So this is the part. In the previous video also we did the same. So here you can see bias is equal to none. We don't need it. Lora dropout is equal to 0 0.05. R is uh, Lora alpha 32. R is equal to 16. And target modules are query and value. Let's see. Let's look at every part. So these are the hyperparameters that can be used with Lora. Let's look at every one in detail. So R, the Lora attention dimension. Okay. So that we have set is 16 here. The target modules. So these are the names of our modules you want to apply LoRa to. So we want them to be query and value. Okay. So then you have LoRa alpha, the alpha parameter for LoRa scaling. Then you have LoRa dropout, the dropout for LoRa. So here you see we are doing that 0 0.05, the dropout probability. You can each even test it with a lot of things, hyperparameters. Then you have fan in, fan out. We are not using it. Set this to true. If you want to rest replace some store bits, we don't need to do that. And bias. So we are setting that to none right now and target models i've already told you so once we run this we have a new model peft model equals to get peft model and the configuration scheme here so let's print the tra new trainable parameters 
we out of 2.4 billion i think we have we are left with only i think 11 yeah we are only left with 11 so do you see the difference the so much difference that we have made from we had so many one but now we have only 11 million now if you see the total number of parameters on which we are going to train is much smaller than there was before now 11 79 6 4 8 and the total parameters were 24 85 and yeah 93 and then we have 724 so you see here we have made sure that we are only using 0.47 percent of the parameters not even one percent and these are also this one just an added 11 million parameters so in this case uh, the uh, reduced batch size has been applied due to the small number of images and uh, because you know we have only six images here and the select optimizer is adam here so we have print data set we have put it in the image capturing data set here as we used here for making sure the images are in the process we want it and then we are using the data loader for train data set shuffle is equals to true and the batch is equals to two so the batch is equals to two because you know we have only six images so like you would if you I, if i put six here just imagine it would go one by one maybe something like that so that's the reason i put two here you can even test it on bigger data sets you can simply go to here just look at like image image data sets and just directly implement uh, like uh, call them here using hugging face and you know see, do the same for them and train a model so we are using the adam uh, like optimizer the learning rate is 5 is to the e minus 5 and then we have cuda like we are using gpu obviously so we are just making sure that the prep model has also uh, like shifted to it then we are going to train it so we are training it for 50 like 50 box okay and same thing prep model input i is equal to input ids here the input id is two device uh, pixel values and then we have the same label inputs and label ids okay so this is this is the loss the final one i will just directly show you so it was this yeah 10.21 and then 10.19 cool so things look okay right now i think from what we had above things are better here like if you see in the beginning things were different right cool so we can go down here and with this last piece of code we are, the notebook is finished but let's test it okay let's test it once so this was the first image and let's input the image that we want processor and the pixel values of the image and then we will use the generated id uh, for generating the mo uh, like uh, the, mo the output of the model so once we give it this is the uh, output which our model gives so i will just make sure that to use this image here right so here we have used it and this is real madrid diego con celebrates after scoring his sec side sec second goal was this the one okay not exactly not exactly but it's 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 close okay now for everyone yeah here you go once you have used all the images all the six images and you are generating the output these this is what we get uh real madrid's diego's con celebrates after scoring his sides is this the one yeah well like it is similar so real madrid's win and yeah so here it is being holding the trophy in front of a crowd what it is here uh yeah so it's not exactly giving good results but because this was a very small data set so a man with soccer ball yeah so once we can run this code once again here you go and then we can actually run this again i will just run it and just see the results we get okay cool so it's training it's training and it's it's going to train for 50 times so you can you guys can actually go to data sets and just look at any you know the previous one was image to image one so you can you guys can also go here and just look for image to text and just look for data sets in image to text and you guys have got a lot of them like diffusion db so has one file that is marked it's unsafe this is the prompt this is the image 14 million image prompt here so you guys can actually fine tune on it but it is 14 million so i would i would suggest you guys to i would suggest you guys to uh, just make sure that you have 
just contacted things differently because training on 40 million is going to take a lot of computation space so you can scale that down and reduce the things so cool and here we go so once the model has been trained you can see so i have trained the model so once again and yeah results look so much different argentina has gained the uh, world cup after winning the world cup in uh, in 1986 so results look different actually if we change the parameters here right here we can actually achieve much much better results but because this data set was only consisting of six images that is what we get so yeah you guys can test it on according to your model whichever model you want instead of sales for blip image captioning large you can use anything else whatever you think is best for you and similar for the data set so yeah that was it from my side thank you and have a nice day